hope you guys are doing all good all right um a subscriber sent me this uh, picture that i should um replicate or teach this uh fascinator would i call it a straw fascinator okay so but um it's been a while now she did that i think sometime in october or november but time didn't permit me but finally i've been able to do it i hope she's watching and i hope um she will come me <laughs> she will come me among the people that fulfills promises all right and uh, of course i tried to do the first save version and uh, yeah her work is beautiful i can actually attest to that so i'll be showing you guys the first save uh, version of that uh, fascinator the lady was actually wearing in the picture so of course you will actually be seeing mine and i'll also be putting you guys through the making of this fascinator hope i tried yeah i've actually gotten um nice comment about it so of course thank god i tried all right guys this is the look i actually decided to show you the different um view of the look yeah a bit tweeting to the right so and also please permit me to say hi and greet my patrons and also i'm also greeting you guys the viewers if you are new to this channel thank you for clicking and of course let's begin to start uh, let's begin with the tutorial all right here with me is the scissors of course you can easily identify what we have here this um a satin fabric and um, of course it um, has two face the dull and the shiny part this is um a brooch i think yeah the bias and the measuring tape and of course we'll be using a needle and thread with of course um the invisible thread which is the fishing line i'll also be using a u gum which is the adhesive a crinoline and of course we'll be using our strawberry i have two um, shapes here not two shapes two sizes but i'll be using the bigger size now for us to start i'll actually be measuring the circumference of this strawberry so it can actually enable us to know the exact size of exact measurement of queen olinda that we'll be using to attach the hems of the we'll be attaching at the hems of the strawberry all right so just uh, be patient with me while i take the measurement while you're viewing all right so that is what it entails so when you are done taking the circumference of course you won't take exact measurement on the crinoline you have to leave some allowance do you understand and let's say maybe five to six inches longer than what we'll be getting from the circumference of this because of course we'll be having some um gathering to make to do so what we got from this circumference is 45.5 inches so i will have to actually this i'm not going to be cutting the crinoline i'll first be um, folding the crinoline into two and i'll be fixing it with a pin i'll be holding that with a pin what i was trying to say here is that i i bought three years from the market so you can as well do the same and then um, while you are attaching it to the straw brim you don't necessarily have to cut it till you get to the point that you need to cut off the excess so that's a way you won't have to be short of the crinoline if you hadn't taken the right measurement you understand so that is what we'll be doing and of course we'll be we'll get to continue in the next um stage when we are done pinning down this with the small size of the straw brim i'm actually going to be using it to form loops yeah it didn't end well but um it's good i show you and of course it's also going to be it's also good for to form loops so just that for that reason i decided to just continue with it it's not like i used it but i just wanted to show you how to actually do um work with it so like i was demonstrating here the satin fabric i actually cut four inches so this is what we're actually going to be using to wrap the straw brim when we cut them in a, in a perfect size when we cut them in the appropriate size that will be needed so actually i even had to 
okay before that um for you to actually cover neatly it's advisable to fold in the both sides the both ends before you finally use it to wrap so i'll be using a sewing machine to um hem the tips of or hem the um, the strips so now you can actually see i'm trying to clean up the straw i've used it before so this is a good thing about keeping things and um, trying to reuse it again so i'll be taking five steps from each uh, from this straw before cutting so should in case you want to be using a straw to form your loops this is a good opportunity for you to learn how to actually get the exact sizes you would want to form the loops so i hope you get this um, particular clip useful and uh, of course i will also be demonstrating what we finally use so do not uh, feel that there is something shady no i'm in for it we are in for it <laughs> transparency is the key so get your mind at rest we'll actually show you every single step all right just keep watching and enjoy your tutorial just a simple way of cutting um, a straw brim to make loops because if you decide to just cut it the usual way um, you can unthread a straw brim it might end up giving it will even end up giving you single strips so basically just to have those five steps that is just a simple way all right so um, considering the loops we are going to be forming for this tie i had to cut more fabric and um, that is just it's just four inches by the length of um, loops you will be forming so it varies it's not like um, there should be an exact measurement all right so for this one i actually had a pre would i call it um, a cinema strip already at my place so there was no need to start for me um, strips so i had to just go and pick i had to pick up these strips and this cinema strip so should in case you want to form a, um, a cinema strip you can as well form it um together with the fabric just lay the cinema right on top of the fabric then fold it together so i've actually taught us how to make uh, a cinema strip here so this is just the simple way you also be using uh, cinema in uh, forming the loops in this tutorial so just so we have to cover just for the fact that we'll be covering these um, cinema strips with a fabric this is just what i had to do but there are better ways to actually get a smoother uh, fabric covered uh, cinema strip i hope i spoke that english well but all the same this simple way of um, covering is okay especially if you hadn't hemmed the tip of the fabric like i did when i thought i was going to use straws but um nothing spoil we are still here so actually it still gave us beautiful work so this is just what we'll be doing and um, to save our time i will just be showing you guys the finished work so you can see i finally covered it with the fabric which is a satin fabric satin material so this is our finished work so we'll be keeping it aside so that we can continue with the the straw the fascinator that's the fascinator with the use of the big straw all right so now we remember that um we folded this crinoline into two with the use of pins the pins are still there just um cover the tips of um 
tie the tip of your crinoline either with the use of gum or with the use of thread whichever one so just so the whole thing is um, strong enough to hold the thread while I pull I had to use a hot glue gun to actually close it tight so that by the time I'm pulling the thread won't come off so just so you see how I'll be stitching it is just a regular stitch um, that you'll be using for this um, attaching for the attachment of the crinoline to the brim just the regular stitch but make sure that um, the thread you are using is not visible do you understand except if you're ready to be using uh, if you're ready to use an invisible thread as this or you get the exact color of the brim so of the brim you're using you understand so that is just the thing and of course if you are using a crinoline to form the hem of your or form a brim an extens extension brim of your fascinator you should know that um, by the time you pull it and pull it it begins to stretch and it gives you that stretchy look so when it starts happening just give it a tiny pleat or you give a small stitch then pull a bit to form gathers then you continue so that with that way you can actually get the puffy look if you don't do like that it will show you the puffy look all right so that's just it and i hope you guys will continue watching and enjoy the rest of the clip where i need to come in and um, explain further i'm surely going to be coming in to explain further so keep watching thank you for clicking if you are a new subscriber consider subscribing and do not forget to click on the bell right beside the subscribe button so that you will always be notified anytime or every time we upload new videos all right so thank you if you've been a subscriber of this channel and you are a returning uh, viewer thank you for tuning in today and um, for our regular viewers thank you so so much all right so you can see how far i've gone um, with the stitching so of course this is what you continue to do till you get to the um the starting point of where you started actually so and make sure that um you leave uh you leave some amount or maybe like two to three inches of the crinoline to actually form the overlap because you wouldn't want to just stop at that exact point you understand but don't to, not worry i will actually be showing you the finished look so that by the time you're ready to do yours you'll be able to um, know the exact way to do it you understand so that's just the, um the simple logic about this okay now you can see i've gotten to the point where i started with the stitching of the crinoline but did i cut from there no I had to give like two to three inches uh, space then I then closed up the crinoline with the same way I actually did and then fully stitch the rest of the crinoline to the brim all right so I'll be showing you exactly just the way I did it it's just the way I've been doing it and when you get to the finish point give it a very tight knot two to three times and um, you should be okay with that and if you are using actually a double threaded needle you can actually um, give a space before cutting off then you can give the final knot hope you understand that English all right that's just it for that and then um, after this we'll actually be moving up to the part where we'll have to be covering the stitches because it's actually necessary so while you're watching how I'm knotting for people for if you are the type that um, finds it um, difficult to give a perfect nose just take a closer look at what I'm doing so that you find it easier while you're doing your own all right so um, afterwards cut off the excess and then we can now move forward right um at this point is either you use a bias strip to cover the stitches or you use a straw a straw strip you understand so either one it's okay so but for me i actually used 
a straw strip and you can see the finished look now this is just the final way of actually covering up and um, so you can see what I did that is all and um, we are done with this part so the next is actually to form the shape of the fascinator so of course this is what um, the woman that was wearing the maker of the fascinator the sample you um, the subscriber sent to me this is what she actually did but of course if you look at it I, I'm actually going to be dropping the the picture right now so that you see but as for me I'm actually going to be taking a different um, angle you understand so her the angle she picked the straw is quite different from this angle I'm actually using so there are two different ways but um, it almost gave us the same look so just so you understand that was why I showed you the earlier folding and now this is the folding I'm actually going to be going with so either way it's okay you understand all right so after determining the fold you would want, just take your needle and thread and stitch up the fold so that it does not flip off if you have um, something else to do at that point. Just stitch it down first with a needle and thread. And after, we can now start working on our loops. Alright guys, that is what it entails and I hope you are enjoying the tutorial. It's time for us to form our loops with the use of strips. Now, these are cinema uh, fabric covered cinema. <laughs> Good. These are cinema strips that are covered in fabrics, okay, in a particular fabric. And um, yeah, to form loops is as easy as just bending the strips to the appropriate size. You understand? So please note that I'm not actually trying to do exactly what. Uh, the sample that was sent to me looks like um of course uh, we are not uh, trying to do the exact look we are just trying to replicate something similar you understand so and um to also uh, let you know uh, if you look closely at the sample i'm still going to extend the picture now if you look closely to uh, at it you will notice that um the maker actually used a single strip to form all those loops and um, the extension was the one she flipped under the rest of the loop if you actually understand but what i'm doing is just a replica not the exact um fascinator so i'm trying as much as possible to just give you a replica of it um um, something similar to it if uh, replica means exact but something similar to it and um, something that you can actually recreate because the uh, person that sent me the sample actually wanted me to teach her how to make the style so I'm trying as much as possible to make it look like um, this is a close look or a close something something that is closer to what she wants and I hope she learns it all right so the 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 strip that was used in the sample is a is a, is a single strip and um of course i have two short strips here and uh, and i will still have to form loops that will give me something closer to what um the sample is so please permit me to just do it the way i feel it's okay and of course the final look is something that should be more important right all right guys that is what it is so just keep watching and i hope you get one or two things that you can actually take home with
so by the time you decide you say okay like now let me just um share with what with you what i'm actually doing now i've actually start, uh, finished stitching the loops together just so i can actually give um a closer look at um look of uh, sample we are doing and, and aside from that i need to also put um, a hot glue gun to make sure that we can actually join the two loops the two strips that we have actually used to form loops together so at this point you can also agree with me now that um, the sample is actually made from a single strip i mean the loops that you can see in the pictures are actually made from a single strip and then the excess is being flipped on that so just so it's um just like that and um i also want you to also know that um you need to if you are going to make it something closer to this i would advise you to use a single strip you understand a very long single strip so just maybe you should just add um something like um 60 inches <laughs> 60 inches and if it's too much you can just cut off the excess you understand or maybe around 50 inches should be okay but that's that's about that so right now i'm actually trying to see how best to place it so that um we can actually get something similar to the sample all right this is just all it takes you to do a fascinator of this nature and um, after you're done with it of course get a, a lace patch or something maybe like a brooch like when I was actually introducing this um, tutorial at the beginning I showed you something that looks like a brooch so you can also get something as that uh, of such and also clip it or glue it to the center of your fascinator or you can get something of this nature that i'm actually using and also glue it down and if you think um you're scared of it flipping off or removing in the future you can just give it um, some little stitches at a strategic points so at that i think we are now at the end of a tutorial so also and um, when i'm done with it of course i'll be showing you guys how it looks on me when i finally finish the whole fascinator so i will actually be wearing it so you see how it looks so and of course you can uh, be able to see how best you would want yours to look when you make yours all right that's just that and uh, when you are done and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and um, I hope you subscribed liked and um, you're going to share our videos right thank you thumbs up and give us a thumbs up right all right God bless you